Hello everyone, my name is Shambhu. We hope you all are doing well. So welcome to this another part of the Python interview series. Now basically today we are going to discuss another five questions which are most trending questions in the 2021 for the Python interviews, right? Now we'll be seeing the questions, we'll be seeing the answer that how to answer these types of questions. And other than that, we'll be re revising out the little bit of topics which are actually particularly used in that question. Right, so without wasting time, let's get started here. Now, here basically starts my very first question and that is basically what are the Python modules? Name some commonly used built-in modules in Python. We all know that Python has n number of modules, right? It has many, many, many modules. So first of all, we just need to define that what we just understand with the Python modules. And other than that, what we need to do is that we need to write some uh, built-in names, built-in module names, which are mostly and which are commonly used in the Python programming language, right? So let's start writing out the definition about the Python modules, right? So first, say that, uh, let's say that what definition we'll be giving here. So Python modules are, are the type of files. Okay, I will just write here files. Okay, so Python modules are files containing, containing Python code, containing Python code. So this is the very first thing which you can uh, tell about the Python modules are Python modules are files that contains the Python code. Okay, so okay, just let me quickly take the eraser from here and let me erase this all and let me now just quickly write that thing one second, one second just. Okay, files containing, so it, that is contain, okay, so Python modules are the files containing Python code. So modules are a type of files that contain some Python code already written into that, right? Other than that, this code, this code, this code can can either be this code can either be functions classes functions classes functions classes or variables okay or variables so the code that is written can either be functions classes or variables whatever like is written inside that right and full stop after that a python a Python module, a Python module, a module is, is a dot .py, is a dot .py file, a Python module is a dot .py file containing, containing executable code, containing executable, containing executable code. Right, so this is the definition regarding the Python modules, which you will be telling if this particular question is asked. So in this case, basically, a Python modules are files containing Python code. So the very first thing is that Python modules are type of files that contain some Python code written into that. Right, other than that, the code which is written, that can be either functions, classes, or variables. It can be anything, right? Other than that, a Python module is basically a .py file that contains the executable code, right? So a Python module is a .py file containing the executable code that we can just execute, right? Okay. Other than that, my second question which was asked to me was that basically let me know about some most commonly used built-in modules in Python, right? Now let's get give the answer for this particular question. So here goes some commonly some commonly used uh, built-in modules, some commonly used built-in modules like this, okay, some commonly used built-in modules. Now, let's start it from here. So, my very first module is basically my JSON module. JSON. Hey, you have heard about the JSON type of files which we have. So the, the JSON is also like type of file which we have and it is actually used when we just want to extract some data from any website or something in that. In that case basically we just use out the JSON files, right? Other than that, I have the module that is math. Now, math is also a very uh, useful module that contains many mathematical functions like trigonometric functions, sine, cos and all these functions are actually contained by this math function. Other than that, I have another that is 
date time date time module is basically a time uh, like module which is actually used to tell you the current date current time and basically it is used in all of these things like this right so date time is a module another module which is uh, like frequently used and commonly used in the python programming language other than that i have the os module so os is also one of the modules which is actually used a lot of in making out the project whenever you just want to make out some projects in that case basically it is used the most and then the most used the most used uh, module in python is the random module this is the frequently and the most used ra module because random is like from you from this name particularly you are able to see that uh, understand that basically random is something that generates some random values to you right so in that case this random is a, a, a module which actually generates some random values to you to get out some other things we want to apply this random model in any other thing and in that case basically it has many uh, n number of functions which actually helps you to take different type of random values as well right so this is the whole idea regarding this random module and other than that i have one another one that is sys okay these are the six modules which are commonly used in the python programming language let me just repeat out that all the ones so that is json math date time os random and sys right so basically i guess that you have got a fair and a clear idea regarding all the that first of all that what is a python module other than that that what are the built-in modules that you have in the python programming language and that are basically commonly used okay let's move on to the next question for now and my next question goes like that what is a lambda function my next question is that what do you understand from the lambda function right now in that case basically i'll be answering out this question with a definition uh, as well okay so basically there is one another name for the lambda function and that is actually called the anonymous function okay we just call the lambda function as the anonymous function as well okay so i would just write that thing as well so anonymous anonymous right so an anonymous function so an anonymous function is known is known is known as a so an anonymous function is known as a lambda function as i just repeated uh, this thing right now that another name for the lambda function is anonymous function right so an anonymous function is known as a lambda function uh, in after full stop, I would just write the function. The function can have can have any number of. It can have basically any number, any number of parameters. It can have any number of parameters. Okay, just one second. Parameters. Let me write that again. Fine. Let me come down. So basically, it can have any number of parameters like this. Okay. But there is one condition actually which applies here. Okay, the function can have any number of parameters, but but one condition that applies here is that but can have but can have just one statement, just one. And okay, just let me come down first of all. You can have only one statement. The statement. So uh, first thing that comes uh, for the uh, lambda functions is that it is also called as anonymous function, right? Second thing that comes is that uh, this function can have any number of parameters, but can have just one statement. A statement can only be one, but it can have many any number of parameters which actually it wishes, right? Okay, let's see a quick example for the lambda function that how we just write out the lambda function, right? So let's say I just took a variable that is um, a. A, okay and simply i would just write here lambda okay lambda now i'll be just passing out my parameters let's say that are c comma d okay now let's say i just want to do the subtraction so c minus d and simply in the print statement first of all i would just write in the parameter that is let's say a and in the bracket let's say i'll be passing the values 10 comma 2 right this is actually how we just write down lambda function this is how we declare the values and this is the whole syntax that first of all you just need to write a variable in that you need to write is equal to then lambda and in, uh, for the lambda you need to put out the variables for, on which you just want to perform this function lambda function right you need to put a colon and after that you need to write that particular thing which you want to do here let's say that you want to sub, do, do sorry do the subtraction between c minus t so you just wrote that thing and simply just need to print out after that you need to write the variable name and simply just need to write out the values for which you want to do out the subtraction and that's it okay right let's come on to the next line here 
and let's go above and see out the next question. So my next question says to me that it asks to me that what are generators in Python? Now let me know that what are the generators in Python. Okay. Now for this question particularly we have very simple definition and that I'll be just writing here that functions that return functions that return functions that return and it rebuild functions that return and it rebuild set functions that return and it rebuild set of items set of items are called are called generators are called generators okay so the functions that return and iterable set of items are called the generators this is what are generators in python right this is a very simple definition which you can just like uh, or learn and even revise as well that functions that return and iterable set of items are called the generators iterable you all know right we have already discussed about the iterators previously that what are iterators right Okay, now let's move towards some uh, one another question. Like we are left with two questions for now. Let's move towards the fourth question. Now, this fourth is a very interesting and a very important question, right? That what does this asterisk uh, ask and asterisk asterisk quark, like what do we just mean from these two terms and why we should use this, right? What's the use of this in the Python programming? In what cases we just use it and all those things. Right, so let's start with the uh, answer and with that only we'll be understanding the things as well, right? Let's start. So basically here I'll be adding that we use, we use args. First of all, I'll be just talking about the args, okay? So we use args when, when we, uh, okay, when, uh, like this, when we, okay, just one second, let me just take out the color once again, right here. When we are, when we are not sure, when we are not sure how many, how many arguments, how many arguments, how many arguments are going, are going to be passed, are going to be passed, passed to a function, to a function, right? Now, basically, we use asterisk args when we are not sure that how many arguments are basically going to be passed into a function. Okay. Now, this is the particularly case where we just need the use of the args. Other case, one more case actually comes here. Let me just write that as well. Comma, or if, or if we, or if we want, or if we want to pass, or if we want to pass, want to pass a store or if you want to pass a stored list list or list or tuple list or tuple of let me just come down okay or if you want to pass a stored list or tuple of arguments tuple of uh, arguments to a to a function okay so this is basically the use of the asterisk args that is basically my args function now after this let's move towards the quarks function let's see that what is the use of this quarks function so i would just write double asterisk and i would just add here quarks okay now quarks is used now basically it is used when we when we don't know when we don't when we do not know how many how many how many keyword arguments? How many keyword? Okay, let me let me just come down. Okay. So asterisk asterisk quarks is used when we do not know how many keyword arguments will be passed. Keywords, okay, just one second. Okay. How many keyword arguments will be will be passed to uh will be passed to a function? Okay, when we just do not know that how many keyboard arguments will be passed to a function in that case basically we just use out this asterisk asterisk quarks okay now or basically or it can be or it can be used or it can be or it can be used to pass to pass the to pass the value to, to pass the value of our dictionary as dictionary uh, to pass the value of a dictionary as keyword as keyword arguments argue 
met right so this is this is a like case where this uh, asterisk arcs and asterisk asterisk quarks are used okay right let me quickly revise the things that we have actually studied about and listened about the arcs and the quarks basically we use asterisk arcs when we are not sure how many arguments are going to be passed to a function or if we want to pass a stored list or tuple of arguments to a function right and now basically asterisk asterisk quarks is used when we do not know how many keyword arguments will be passed to a function or it can be used to pass the value of a dictionary as keyword arguments right now basically basically this is the case this, these are the two definition these are the two uses that why we just use this asterisk arcs and asterisk asterisk quarks now basically it's not the case that we can just only write asterisk arcs we you can just write asterisk a asterisk asterisk b you can just put on these things as well but basically what is the case that the identifiers arcs and quarks are a convention that you could use actually okay uh like basically you can just use any convention let's say instead of arcs and instead of quarks you can just write anything like okay a b c d whatever you just wish you can just write but arcs and quarks are basically a given particular uh, conventions which are actually used so in that case basically we just always prefer to prefer to basically use out this as well right now let's move towards the last question for now and that is basically does python has oops opt oops concept okay does python have oops concept right so in that case i'll be just writing yeah you all know that yes it has but how to give out the answer you will simply not be saying that yes by the nas oops object this is not this will not be a correct way to answer out an interview question right so i'm just telling you just how to answer so python is an object oriented python is an object oriented object oriented programming object oriented programming language this thing we all know right and even in the previous interview questions we had already discussed this thing as well right that python is an object oriented programming language right now this means that this what does we mean from it so this means this means that we uh, okay this means that one second not we this means that any any program any program can be let me come down python is on interpret uh, object oriented programming language this means that any program can be solved can be solved in python can be solved in python by python by creating this uh, like it can be any of the program can solve be uh, solved in python by creating an object model by creating an object model okay and basically however python can be treated as procedural as well as a structural language as well but there is no no such a need to write that thing and just i can just only let you know that however python can be treated as procedural as well as a structural language also right so this is the answer that you are going to give that if does this python has oops concept or not so you're not going to simply write that yes or okay? you're just not simply going to write the answer as yes so you need to give out the answer in a little bit of explanatory way so in that case you'll be giving out that python is an object oriented programming language this means that any program can be solved in python by creating any object module mo sorry any object model right so these were the five questions that we have discussed today let me just give you an overview of all the five questions that we have discussed today right so my very first question was that what are python modules name some commonly used built in modules in python so we had seen that what are the python modules so these are the files containing the python code right this uh, code can be either in functions classes or variables and python module is a dot py file containing executable code and we had seen some commonly used built in modules that were json math daytime os random and sys after that we had seen that what is a lambda function so i just let you know told you that basically the another name for the lambda function is anonymous function so an anonymous function is known as a lambda function the function can have any number of parameters but can just have one statement right and this was the example that we had seen after that we had seen that what are generators in python so there was a super simple definition for the generators and that was functions that return an iterable set of items are called generators right now after that we had seen that what does this mean 
asterisk asks, asterisk asterisk quarks, and why we should use it. So we use asterisk asks when we are not sure how many arguments are going to be passed to a function, or if we want to pass a stored list or tuple of arguments to a function, right? And asterisk asterisk quarks is used when we do not know how many keyword arguments will be passed to a function, right? Or it can be used to pass a value of a dictionary as keyword arguments, right? And at last, we had seen that this Python of Coop, uh, OOPS concept. So yes, Python is an object-oriented programming language. This means that any program can be solved in Python by creating an object model. So these were the five questions that we have discussed today, and I hope that you have got a basically fair and a clear idea regarding all the five questions that uh, how to answer these types of questions if asked in the interviews. Right, we'll be coming up some with some more new questions in the next video. So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care.